Well, hello, and welcome to Opal City Confidential, a Starman podcast, episode 53, last year's model. Um, I'm titling this episode that. That is the title of the first issue of these this two-parter, issues 26 and 27 of Starman Volume 1, starring Will Payton, and this is the meeting of Will Payton and David Knight, and the first appearance of David Knight as Starman. Um, I've been looking forward to reading this because I have never read it, as I have not read any of this series until I started, except for some stuff at the end that was tied into Eclipso, that Eclipso event. But I was looking forward to it, and I've gotten to it, and I have thoughts. So let's get to the first issue. Let's go to Mike's Amazing World and get the information on Starman 26. Uh, it was cover dated September 1990. On sale date, July 31st, 1990. It was a dollar. I would kill for a dollar comics. Uh, they are so no longer here. Edited by Katie Main. Uh, it is, again, next year's model. That is the actual title. I've called it last year's model. Because I'm a jerk. Um, I don't know. It just I, That was my thought. Uh, written by Roger Stern. Art by Dave Hoover. We have a new artist, Dave Hoover. Um, it's okay. It's good. It's, I like Dave Hoover. I like It's not bad. It's good. But I really, really was loving Tom Lyle. And I miss him. Inks by Carlos Garcon, who I really love his inks. He did some inks for Al Williamson on the Star Wars newspaper strip, which was beautiful. Uh, letterer Robert M. Pinaha, colorist Carl Gafford, features Starman, of course, his mom and dad, Jane and Marie. Uh, it's got some new characters. The villain is Nimbus. Um, and also appears David Starman, David Knight, the son of Ted Knight. Uh, there's some cameo appearances in Will's thoughts of Hawkman Flash, Dr. Fate, Midnight. Um, and the synopsis in Mike's Amazing World is this. David Knight, the son of the original Starman, plans to take over his father's superhero legacy. He then learns there's another Starman already using the name. Angered, David contacts the media and arranges a challenge to the new Starman. Will agrees to meet David in the, at the Astrodome. He is cordial and even offers to change the name, his name if necessary. However, David, David sucker punches him and starts a fight. David's trainer, Andy Murphy encourages both men to fight. It results in David being knocked out. Murphy then takes Starman's cosmic belt, David's uh, cosmic belt. He reveals that he is actually the Starman's original, the original Starman's formal foe, The Mist, though he now chooses to call himself Nimbus. Um, this is the first appearance of Nimbus, the first post crisis um appearance of the character and i don't really get why they changed his name it's silly it's silly 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 so let me just give you my thoughts on this comic um it was great i really did like it i really did like it the art i uh, missed lyle immediately but i think uh david hoover does a fine job he could tell a story it's uh, he's done other stuff that i have liked uh such as the wanderers max series wanderers were a legion Spinoff when Legion was at its height, they were spinning off some of the other characters. Wanderers was this bunch of super teams. He did some, he does some of this. He does some Marvel Comics presents. He's a he's a good comic artist, just good, just little G good. Can tell a story. Um, I think it suits as a continuation of um, Tom Lyles. I don't think that their style choices are that far apart, which I kind of like a little bit of continuity, but I also like a jump. Um, but it's pretty good. I like that David is wearing the cosmic belt and the cosmic rod. I don't think he's doing that in... Yes, he is doing that in Starman because uh, Nash gets... That's what uh, the Miss uh, Brother, Nash's uh, Kyle, gets the, the belt and he, when he, before he is killed by uh, Jack Knight. So, after David's death. But it's good. I mean, it's, it, it works. We get to see David Knight putting on the costume. Um, 
the first two pages are that, or it's uh, the splash page is the third page. So you get to see David, you know, working out with his trainer, Murphy, Mr. Murphy, and being told. And then we see Jack saving a truck going through the icy mountains of the Rockies because, you know, Starman covers the whole Southwest, Colorado, Utah, New Mexico, Arizona. And that's a, like, I like a regional hero. Um, and how Murphy's just, it's really subtle. You just, Murphy's just, he, it's not being written as he is. You know he's manipulating him. He just has been and is, and it happens. Um, we get to see a little bit of the Roger Stern bringing the family back together. The, uh, the Everybody's happy and uh, happy. The whole Peyton family's back together, loving. They're having a little barbecue. It's nice. He sees the announcement. And I want to know something. In the post-crisis world, this is, I am, I like the post-crisis world. I'm old enough that the first 20 years of comics I read were pre-crisis. But I like the post-crisis universe. There are, mis- there were mistakes made. I think they, you could have been, there, with better planning, that it could have been less painful uh, and have less errors. Hawkman was a, a problem. Um, Legion was a problem. But others worked. But I don't understand that how Will wouldn't um, know that there was another, an early star man. Except his sister knows it. She's, I mean, it's, um, they're watching the news. And Will's like, who is this guy? Can't, he can't be serious. Uh, I'm afraid he is, Will, says Jane. A couple of weeks ago, I found this at the library, library book sale altered egos it's about the costume heroes of world war ii so well there was a earlier star man and that man is a spitting image of him i guess it's not surprising they've never heard of you've never heard of him according to this book he retired shortly after the war end of the war uh i wonder why hey he was even a member of the justice society of america mom don't look at me that was before my time all i know that those War heroes are some vague stories my uncle Max told me when I was a girl. I was a little when I was a little girl. I, I don't remember much about him, so they don't know. So she, they don't know, and she continues. But I still recall Uncle Max's eyes would brighten whenever he heard talk about them. And then Will's reading from a book. They were quite a crew, all right. Doctor Fate, Hawkman, Doctor Midnight, the original Flash, all of them. To think that that Starman was one of them, he must have really been something told his own with that company. He had some strange enemies, too. Brainwave, the Brotherhood of Electron, the Mist. So they're dropping a hint. Roger, you're a smart man. He's dropping a hint. And then uh, you see on the... We go back to TV, and David is challenging him to come to the Astrodome. We get to see that um, reporter that looks like Gabe Kaplan from Rock. Um, Welcome Back, Cotter, again. <laughs> um, Sarman's cheered when he arrives. Will's cheered. Um, um, and he goes out there and he's like uh, he apologizes he introduces him hello how do you do better than you uh, uh, look I'm sorry if my being called Starman has offended you or your family David goes are you yes you see the name wasn't my idea some kid called me that the first time I appeared in public and it's it stuck and you can hear, you can see um, Murphy whispering, or hear Murphy whispering in his ear. He's full of it, Davy. Huh? He's trying to play you for a sucker. Something wrong? Are you all right? And David's like, I. He's trying to make you look incompetent on national television. Are you going to stand for that? No. And then somehow he shoots him through the roof with the cosmic rod. I don't know. I don't know. It's just all of a sudden, Will. It's a one page panel of him coming through, Will coming through the roof of the Astrodome. And then they have a nice, they have a battle. And, you know, David uses his powers to make a bubble to stop him. And he keeps it, and Nimbus is, what you don't see is, now you start to see that uh, Murphy is following him. He looks like a ghost. Um, And even Will can hear his voice because he's a mist and he's turned himself into a gas. He uses his energy ray to zap Uh, David. He grabs him. And then he just passes out. He's gone catatonic. And then you see they land and Murphy's there treating him. He's like, and uh, 
Will's talking. It's still all being televised, and Will's talking, and Murphy's checking out David Wise passed out, and Will goes, you heard the man. Give him some space. And that's when Murphy takes the cosmic converter belt, puts it on, and he says, the converter belt is mine. Cha- charge with enough power to level. Oh, yeah, that's right, because Will's power overloaded the belt. Uh, um, and I will... Uh, the ch- converter belt is mine. Charge with enough power to level the world. And I owe it all to you two. It took months of manipulating to get night under my control. But it was worth it. Duping the son of my oldest foe more than makes up for the defeats his father handed me. You, and Will goes, you, yours was a voice I heard. Who are you? My original name doesn't matter. For our, over half a century, I have been called The Mist. But no more. Now I advance to a state beyond human form. I am a force of nature. You may call me Nimbus. And that says next issue, Riders of the Storm. Uh, it was a fun issue. It's solid Roger Stern superhero comics. Um, and I'm going to talk about Roger a little bit uh, after the next issue because we're going to move right on to issue 27. Uh, and that was cover dated October 1990. So I my, the year of my... 26th birthday. 26? Yes, 26th birthday. Um, came out August 28th, uh, 1990. It was a dollar. Editor Katie Main. Um, same exact... Oh, no. Scott Hanna is back as Inker. So we'll talk about that. And we have a new colorist, Tom McCraw. Again, both Starmans, uh, Jane and Marie. Bob, um, also called Ron, the TV reporter. Um... Nimbus the villain, Guy Gardner appears. Um, Oracle has in a quick appearance. So does Ted Knight in a flashback. Um, the synopsis for this one is, With the power of the original Starman's cosmic converter, Nimbus grows in size and power. He begins taking on over the world's weather. Starman and David Knight help to rescue people most affected by the growing storm. Working together, the two men are able to take back the cosmic converter and defeat Nimbus. David's cosmic robbed is damaged beyond repair during the fight. He's assigned to step aside and allow Will Payton to continue using the name Starman to carry on his father's legacy. All right, now let me pull this bag boy, bad boy out of its bag and board. Um, Starman 27. Um, it's got a good... I like the cover uh, by Dave Hoover. It's got Nimbus threatening in green and Starman with a rocket bomb on his back. Um... It's really nice. It's really nice. I'm really digging it. Um, This one starts with a great splash page of a giant nimbus inside the Astrodome. Um, The reporter, who's now black, African-American, I I think they, I think we have a colorist who's decided to change the ethnicity of the reporter on the splash page. Oops. Um, But it starts with nimbus, um, the reporter doing, doing some exposition, which I won't read, but it has uh, Nimbus. Well, I mean, it starts with some uh, the exposition from the reporter updating the reader and Nimbus saying that he is now more powerful with the converter belt and he's created a giant storm and he can hold, he, it, he's still got the kind of, instead of having the whole wispy body, you know, like this head with no body that he had always been portrayed as before, he has a body of a like looks like a tornado which is i really love the mist so this is not this is not one of my favorite things in in this star man is to read them but it was the era of redoing stuff but his hands can hold things he's a giant he's creating a, a storm it's knocking out power everywhere Starman gets tossed across the town through an empty building because in these days you couldn't have someone just go through a building where someone could get hurt they didn't even want to infer it um but there's a storm is all over and Will is trying to, he flies, trying to get back to the battle. He's trying to call out Nimbus. He gets hit by a lightning bolt, uh, and he's nailing there. In he's standing the poor in, and then David comes to help him. And David just has his cosmic rod. He protects them both from the storm, and then Nimbus appears. No, you um, and they're um. Well, okay, no, here's there's some great here. I, I I don't want to skip this. Uh, Ted get I mean not Ted Jesus David gets here and he lands and Will goes you you're all, you're all right you can still fly I thought never stole your power supply only one of them my star scepter 
I like Cosmic Ride. I do not like Star Scepter, but it's better. You know, you can't do the dirty jokes with uh, with uh, the Cosmic Rod jokes. As an energy converter itself, listen, I owe you an apology. When I attacked you, I was under the being that being's influence. I'd like to put our differences aside for now. The way Nimbus is the way Nimbus is going to town, I'd say we better. Speak of the devil. Good Lord, Murphy. No. And then um, that was David and Will's um, little conversation. And then Nimbus goes, No, you insignificant speck. You never there never was an Andy Murphy. I was it, he was just a mask, a charade. It's like, and Will's think it's like confronting the great and powerful Oz. It is. It does look like the great and powerful Oz. Um, so he dismisses them. He stops the storm, and then these two heroes fly off. They rescue some people from a uh, who from a capsized a tugboat that's run into a ship. Um, they put out a fire at at a oil refinery. All this is from the storm. They clean up the oil that's being poured into the bay from the wreck. They take the people to, you know, they rescue people. They um, do all this. Um, and then they go to Star. Are they at Star? Yes. Oh, the Johnson Space Center. They go to the Johnson Space Center. And there is David working with the scientist. Uh, I love this. Will's thinking, who designed this lad? This. Lucas or Spielberg. And you see David, he's talking there with us. He's talking about the rocket and the monster. And he gives you some exposition. Um, and he wants to, he wants to talk to, uh, to Will and explain this. I need, to, I need your help. I also owe you an explanation. But there isn't much time. As long as Nimbus is out there, this country, the whole world is in danger. He, was, he has an especially deep-seated loathing for the United States. As the mist, he was Dad's most persistent enemy. I know about him over, only from reading about their battles when I was a boy. Back then, they seemed like fantastic figures from some adventure comic. At times, I didn't know that my father had been Starman. I only found out after my fa- mother died. She kept my father's secret all her my father's secret all her married life, and they had always been a certain distance between myself and my father. The only thing we had in common was our love for her and our fascination for astronomy. After months, mom's, my mother's death, I had made attempts to bridge the generation gap, but dad kept playing the great stone face. I remember thinking he was as remote as the stars. Now I know he, he was at war with himself over what to tell me and how. Six months later, he finally broke his science, his silence. Dad, I got a message you... Come in, David. There's something I, I, you should know. He had shaved off his mustache and washed the gray from his hair. He could have passed for my twin, but that was part of the surprise. He told me his days as Starman had given him a, and how he'd been given up the life when he was married. But early in his career, he and the Justice Society members had been eradicated by a bizarre explosion that slowed their pro- process and processes slow their processes slowed their aging process. I'm missing a word there, Roger. As ma- mother and grown older he had aged himself cosmetically now that she was gone he decided he was tired of pretending uh, to be old and felt he tried to pretend to be ordinary and the world was changing said the world needed heroes again uh, he shows him a newspaper with uh, Jess Lee Cobb said he had already been in touch with some of his old JSA cronies he was planning on bringing Starman out of retirement I'm afraid I didn't take that news very well he goes uh David yells at me, you're out of your mind. We argued. I I said a lot of things I now regret, but I couldn't dissuade him. Then I realized I turn, turned on my heels and walked away. And then he talks about a self-discovery, uh, taking a trip, um, meeting Andy. And then we get to the end of his little flashback. And all that time, I never once tried to co- contact my father. Then one day I found out that I'd lost my chance. Um, he died. He died in how they wrote them out after Crisis, which they go and they battle in Ragnarok and all the surviving uh, Justice Society people died. It's, it was a terrible fix. It's not a bad comic, but it's a terrible fix. And this is, now I just want to talk about this while we're at it. This is so different of an origin because there's no Jack. So Stern only created David. He only created one son. And we don't even know who the mom is, really. It's not 
Doris from the Golden Age comics, or is it? But it's not. It's the mother we get to meet in um, Starman's, uh, Robinson Harris uh, Starman. So that was neat. That was neat to see that. And now they're getting back together, and they have, um, he gives them his plan. I appreciate, uh, they make amends, and I like this. It's been really good. Uh, and then we're seeing that everything all over the place, power, communications are down because of the storm. Um, and David goes, I was able to talk NASA into providing some equipment, but I don't have the power to use it on my own. I know that I've put you through a lot today, but I need your help to stop Nimbus, will you? And Will thinks, would you ask that even if, you, if I'd been Starman less than a year or I got those powers by accident? You keep looking at me as if I, I were the old pro. Well, next to you I am. What do you want me to do? So he flies up with this um, this bomb or whatever, and he goes to the cloud that is Nimbus. Is this a cloud with a big head? Um, and he's like a missile. How quaint. <laughs> um, and Will goes, hey, keep laughing, blowhard. Take, um, I'll make it easy to shove this down your throat. Ha <laughs> ha. Come right ahead, but be careful. I'm afraid it's a bit windy out today. God, these are some great but bad lines. So he's powering up the bomb. He flies into the cloud, gets zapped by lightning. David shows up uh, and is being zapped and zapped. He's, he's protecting himself with his cosmic rod, his star sapphire. Um, and he uses it to steal the converter from the cloud. And then they together melt it and it explodes. Um... David throws, falls to the ground because his cosmic rod is melted. Star, sap, star Spectre. And then he goes, he just, they have a nice little saying goodbye. Um, he feels bad. Uh, David says, Stooge, go ahead, say it. A sto uh, stooge with a star scepter is a lot more dangerous than any a normal stooge, or any three stooges for that matter. And he tells him he's just going to fail you, and he gives it over, and they may, they become friends. I like it. Uh, I wonder what Stern would have done with David if he had brought would have brought him back if he'd said because um, we're getting near the end of his run. Uh, I like the changes in I, I like the differences. I get where Stern was going. I like the changes that Robinson makes so he can create Jack when Will's kill when Will's gone. So overall, I like this two parter. Was it as good as the last arc? No, not really. It was pretty. It was a good. It was a solid superhero comic. I found I didn't like Nimbus and I didn't like the tweaks in Nimbus and I thought Nimbus, I, I don't, I really like the Golden Age Mist and the Silver Age Mist and I really love Robinson's take on the Mist. So this version of him didn't really hit it with me. And it's just that kind of early 90s uh, post-crisis reboot stuff that I don't really like. So, but it was okay. It was okay. But overall, the art was good. I, 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 there are going to be a few issues with Hoover. There is one more Roger Stern issue, which is part of the Red Kryptonite Caper storyline. It's it's so it's part of it. It's an insert chapter in a four part Superman story. So there are five issues, four issues of Superman comics, and then the one Starman, which that has one of the few Triangle era. If you know what that means, there was an era post-crisis, post-burn, where they had four Superman books and you would read, there was a triangle that told you what order you should read them in week to week because it came out, you know, one dip book came out every other week, but you didn't have to. You could read Man of Steel, you could read Action, or you could read The Adventures of Superman, you could read Superman. They all had their own creative teams, their own plot, but it read as if the all these things were going on at once and that was continuity. It was amazing and I loved it. And they've announced the first triangle on the bus which excites me, so I may do some triangle reading when that comes out later in the year. Uh, I'm very, very excited about it. Very, very excited. And the Starman um, is kind of like through part 3.5 or 2.5. But I'm going to cover that whole story as one episode. I'm not going to cover all the individual issues, really. I'm going to kind of go quickly over the Superman parts, I think. But I will be doing... That will be the next David. I'm not sure David will be in two weeks. I have some other plans. 
There is other Starman that I kind of want to cover, so I want to kind of do get take some time to read those issues, figure out how much of I'm of it I'm going to do, or if I'm going to get a guest to come on and do it, since it's the last Roger Stern one. But I don't think it's the single issue is really that important. Um, but we're getting near a change, and I also want to read up on why it happened, so I can talk about it better. And I will be using um, the Bill Simone articles uh, from back issue. Uh, to do some homework. So we're probably going to pause for David for a few weeks. Uh, Some of the options coming up is the Japanese movie, The Evil Brain from Outer Space, which involves a character called Starman. I watched the first of the three movies that make up that trilogy um, from the 60s, 50s and 60s in Japan. And so I got to do some homework before that. I'm also going to be covering a um, a little Black Hammer book, but... Uh, called Dr. Andromeda, which was originally, when it first came out, in its issue form and in its first trade version, as Dr. Star. They've changed it to Dr. Andromeda. But I want to cover that, too. And then Kirby came up with a smart idea, because he's a smart young man, that I should cover the Jeff Bridges movie. And I think I will, because, one, I love Jeff Bridges. I think he's one of my favorite actors. He is one of my favorite actors. And it is an amazing movie. Him and... uh, Deb. um, Good God, I'm forgetting her. The young woman from Indiana Jones. God, I'm an idiot. But I'm not going to go look because I just forgot I'm an idiot. But I'm going to do that. But I like this two-parter. It was neat. It's got JSA. Um, I don't think... I think that I can imagine that this David is the David that is in the beginning of Starman. I don't think robinson tweaks in that much but most of my david is the nice guy that meets with his that i know is who meets with his brother every year and talking to david so but hey check these out folks it's fun i'm enjoying the run i'm and, and, um everybody who's been reaching out to about there are few people in reaching out and i want to thank them again uh we got a nice response from ben um uh, sherman who i read out and he's uh commented um He commented on a post when I was promoting this upcoming episode. Uh, He wrote, uh, he listened to Billy on World on Fire, the great Billy D. Um, I love being on World on Fire. We did a great, uh, DC Comics Presents uh, Freedom Fighters team up, uh, uh, Superman, Freedom Fighters team up, loved it. And then he also, he thanked me for saying he's enjoyed my Legion. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. I appreciate that. Uh, I have thoughts about Dave Cockrum, the greatest comic designer next to Jack, only to Jack Kirby. That's one of them. Um, and he commented on the structure. I appreciate it. Uh, and I know there's a long-term plan. There is. And Kirby has added to it. So, uh, there. So, that's what's going on. I uh, hope to have the Ben. I hope you listen to this. And then two days later, you'll be listening to my Legion episode. I'm doing a bunch of recording today. I did uh, the JSA Scooby-Doo team up, which posted this morning, uh, Saturday the 23rd. Of March, and this is going to go up on Tuesday the 26th on our normal Starman date to play a little catch up. And then we'll be back with a Christmas comics two we- a week after that uh, because we're up to the Starman Christmas comic. And I'm going to do that. And I'd love a suggestion from anybody who wants to tell me what should be the uh, the something to go with it. I'm going to look for a Golden Age Christmas superhero JSA member. So that's, uh, I'll be putting feelings out there, feelers out there for one, if anybody knows. All right, folks. Hey, thank you for listening. Thank you for letting me ramble in your ear for this 30-minute period of time and talk about Starman. As always, thank you. Be safe. Be smart. Please be kind to one another and read some comics.